Okay, so these things are far away, but we've got some pretty fast spacecraft, right? That's right. In fact, we have the Solar Parker probe, which is uh, the record holder for both the hottest space probe getting to 1600 degrees Celsius because it's getting near the sun. And we talk about this in the stars course and also the fastest probe. So its current clock speed is 540,000 kilometers per hour. We think it can get up to 700 thousand kilometers per hour. So that's fast, right, Paul? That's uh, extremely fast. Of course, it's cheating because it's getting most of that energy by falling in close to the sun. And if you're going to go into stellar, we have to go in the other direction. But Exactly. So this is the put it into the scale. Is it's gotten its speed by going very close to the sun. Then it goes back. So it does these yo-yos. And every time it goes closer to the sun, it picks up a little bit of speed in what we call the gravity assist. And we'll explore this technique uh, more in a minute. But let's imagine, all right, we have 540,000 kilometers per hour. Surely we can get to, say, even our solar system a lot faster if we were to give it a good kick, right? OK, so let's do this is the sort of maths I think we can do in this course. Yep. Uh, but that sort of speed, how long is it going to take to get somewhere interesting like Pluto? Pluto, five and a bit billion kilometers means we can get to Pluto in about 400 days if we kind of perfectly timed our speed and perfectly got the right alignment to shoot out to Pluto. Of course, if you suddenly diverted Parker Solar Probe in that direction, it would slow down as it went away. Exactly. Because, of course, a New Horizons probe that did get to Pluto did not do it in 401 days. No, that's right. It took, it took about, many years. That's right. It took closer to 10 years. Yes. And this is the thing is even at your top speed, you're still going to lose some of that speed. But still, let's imagine we have the, the best system possible. So 400 days. Yeah. OK, that's. So within the re realm of possibility, we're talking about one to a few years to go anywhere in our solar system with a really fast rocket. That's right. Most rockets we want to save on fuel. Yeah, that's right. So we can have a bigger payload, take interesting things when we get there. So we might trade off with taking longer to get there. That's right. Um, and therefore less fuel and therefore slower. But in principle, if you you could launch lots and lots and lots and lots of fuel, maybe ballpark a year or two to get to Pluto. OK, but we also explore that Alpha Centauri and Proxima Centauri a, a little bit further than Pluto. In fact, 39 trillion kilometers essentially further because at this scale, the billion doesn't matter. So at 540,000 kilometers an hour, it's going to take about 8,400 years in the ideal best case scenario to get to the next thing. Yes. So to be getting there now, we'd have to launch maybe a couple of thousand years before the first pyramids in Egypt. Yeah, that's put in the scale and still be waiting for another few thousand years almost. So, you know, if we were to launch Solar Parker Probe right now, it would be landing somewhere in the year 10,000 or so, 10,500. I don't know if we'll be around to see that event happen. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I we probably know that's more sure. So this is the point I think when we think of interstellar travels, even at our best speeds, it still is going to take a really, really long time. And this is the next star. Now let's just get to the center of our galaxy. A lot of people talk about, oh, there's all these stars and galaxies. Can't we go further? Well, on the scale of kilometers, it's a very, very long way to the center of our galaxy as we explore in the yes. stars course. So it would take about 50 million years for the so solar that means park. to get there now, we'd have to set off just after the dinosaurs went extinct. That's right. And, and this is the thing I'd like to think about is we are much closer to living with the dinosaurs than essentially reaching the center of our own galaxy with the best thing we can do right now. And so this, I think, becomes the ultimate challenge of interstellar travels. No matter what you can do in terms of technology, you're kind of going to be limited by the vast, vast vast distances in space.